breastfeeding for me has been the biggest, biggest struggle pretty much um, of my life, to be honest, and the biggest achievement ever when I did manage to get through and establish the breastfeeding and just be one of those mums who you see kind of and you envy who just seem to be breastfeeding easily. Everyone's got a story behind closed doors. It's never that easy for anybody. Hey, I'm SJ and my third baby is now two and a half weeks old and I'm trying to breastfeed but really struggling with an old issue that I've had every single baby which is an oversupply of breast milk, also can be called hyperlactation. Whenever I tell people that I basically produce way too much milk, People either look at me like I'm crazy or are like, oh my God, thank God I found somebody else with the same issue because it is quite a less common problem than having an undersupply of milk. The other thing people also say is, well, that's a good problem to have. And I get why people say that because it must be really hard not knowing if your baby's getting enough milk. However, it's not a good problem. It means just as much as an undersupply. But often it means you can't breastfeed, the baby can't latch on or can't keep up or you experience really bad issues with engorgement and mastitis, which cause you to stop breastfeeding earlier than you would like to, which is what happened with me with my first baby, um, where I breastfed for five weeks, just with a series of mastitis, engorgement, he couldn't latch properly, uh, he was pulling off, and actually each feed became more of a battle than this kind of bonding experience that I'd so desperately wanted it to be. Um, second time around, I managed to breastfeed for 10 months, managed to get breastfeeding established, which is when you're kind of working with this supply and demand, um, which kind of everyone talks about, and achieved my kind of dream, which was to be one of those mums who you see just seem to pop the baby on, they feed and pop off when they're finished. To me, that was like an impossibility. It took me a long time, I'd say at least two and a bit months, two to three months to get to that stage, but I did do it. Um, and if you are dealing with an oversupply, then I'm going to share with you what you need, the kits that you need to help just cope with that oversupply, um, and then other techniques is also to help you lower your milk supply. To show you what I'm talking about, people who don't have an oversupply, when I'm feeding on one side, um, my milk comes in really a lot of milk. So um, the other side lets down as well. Typically, the best thing that you 100% need to get is breast shell. So this is a breast shell um, that I use. You can buy these online. This is full of milk, and that is milk that has come out of the other side. While I was feeding on my left, this is what typically would come out of the right-hand side. Full of milk. This amount of milk would not be kind of captured in a normal breast pad that you can use just to sort of stop yourself from dripping. This is a huge amount of milk. The milk squirts everywhere, can get all over the baby's face, can cause the baby to sort of gag and pull off and not want to be around. So if you are having an oversupply, get yourself some breast shells. The other thing you need to get are some freezer bags. So these are by, I never can pronounce this, these are by Lansino. Um, and then what I do is just, as you can see, pop that milk into these freezer bags and then I keep that in the freezer it lasts for a week in the fridge or six months in the freezer so I just pop the date on leave that in the freezer and to me this really helped me to cope with the fact that I was producing so much milk that I was putting it away in the freezer towards an end goal to so set yourself a goal I set myself a night out um, three months after the baby was born and used all of this felt like kind of having money in the bank towards that night out so that's what to do with your kind of oversupply of milk the other techniques for when you're feeding your baby are you can sort of hand express a bit off if they're finding the beginning of the feed really, really difficult. Um, don't worry about doing that. I normally pop the baby on, start the feed, and my oversupply is also coupled with a kind of a forceful letdown. And you might start to be able to feel that milk coming sort of gushing in when the baby starts to suck and swallow, and they're swallowing, swallowing, and then they're like, they're not quite keeping up. Pop them off. You're going to need to buy yourself laser muslins. Keep that muslin underneath while you're feeding and try and feed the baby kind of cross cradle because then any extra they can kind of just be falling out the side of their mouth and have your muslin there to capture all of that. Or if you also have a forceful letdown, when you feel that forceful letdown coming, pop your finger in the baby's mouth, little finger, and pop the baby off. 
pop that muslin up against there to capture all that big burst of oversupply because that's what's going to just make the baby gag. Once that's gone, fade it down a bit, that always takes a few seconds, then pop the baby back on. So if you feel that coming, do have a muslin to hand and that really will help you and it helped me. Another technique, I realised that the baby was coping a lot better at bedtime. Um, and I think that's because, you know, they go towards you and they start going, when they're hungry, they're like, <gasps> and they're like, you know, grabbing around your be- breast and your nipple and really stimulating the milk. And then the milk's like, Psh! Um, and I found that when at bedtime, the feed was much easier. So if you're really struggling and they're refusing the breast milk, one technique I tried with my second son, which worked really well, was fed him when he was asleep. So literally woke him up during the day and gave him dream feeds even during the day as well. Because he would just pop on and because he was sleeping, because he wasn't stimulating the milk as much, he would feed a lot easier. The only breast pads that I could use that even halfway keep up with my supply are the Lansnow ones. Don't buy those cheap own brand ones from other places these are the only ones that really do absorb they're bigger they're really absorbent you'll need to change them a lot but they're fantastic huge question when it comes to oversupply is to pump or not to pump the pump was totally my enemy i was so scared of pumping because if you pump then your body thinks it's used the milk and will keep producing the milk and this is the problem with supply and demand it thinks it's used it um however you all you are going to also get engorged and that is a risk of mastitis which is what you desperately desperately want to avoid with an oversupply it's a total killer on top of everything else you're dealing with the milk going everywhere the spillage is everywhere and just feeling totally gross within yourself i decided to pump once a day to totally empty my breasts out um i would in the morning when i woke up have a pump, run the bath, pump as much as I could. I could pump up to sort of five, seven ounces in the morning, then get in the bath and just have a massage and let any additional milk come on and then do my morning feed. Um, And I didn't find that that brought more milk in. There was so much milk anyway. It just meant that I started the day with a totally clean plate, if you like. And I was so nervous about my side just having experienced it so many times. I chose to do this. Um, If you are getting really full, I just think give it a go. See if it works for you. It's controversial. Do pop down below how you've dealt with your oversupply and how you feel about pumping. I know it's counterintuitive, but the second I started doing it, I felt that weight off my mind and that heaviness off my chest um, because it was so much better. So when it comes to trying to reduce your milk supply, which obviously you'll be wanting to do, know that at about six weeks there is a hormone change which will naturally reduce your your milk supply anyway. So do keep going and try to get to that six week mark and you will hopefully notice the change. There are also sort of teas out there you can buy, like a sage tea. There's a tea called No More Milk Tea, which I bought. I'll link it below. Um, those are kind of herbal remedies um, that kind of go some way to helping it. But the most successful one I used is block feeding. So block feeding is basically you feed just on one side for a number of feeds. It can be up to sort of three feeds or just think about it in day part. So I would do it for half a day on one side. What that means is the other breast gets really full. It, the milk is not used apart from the milk that comes out naturally and you're capturing your shell that should send the signal to your brain there's too much milk is not being used send less next time in a very layman's terms google block feedings so it will explain it really scientifically to you that really worked for me it takes quite a while to work um, but it does start to work and i did that really religiously and my oversupply was so much i think i actually fed on one side for pretty much a whole day The other thing that happened to me with my second baby, which is already starting to happen with my third, is I actually fed just off one breast, just off my left breast for pretty much the last six months of breastfeeding. I had so much milk just from one that the baby would just get full up from one side feeding. There was no possible way I could then switch to the other side. So already I'm feeding majority of the time on my left side, but it is possible to sustain breastfeeding just on one breast. And that's what I did with my second baby up until 10 months. The only kind of thing that can happen is you can have slightly lopsided boobs, but I mean, who cares about that? They're not gonna be looking like a million dollars afterwards anyway, sorry girls. 
there is actually help out there. There's an amazing blog called Frank About Feeding, which I'm going to link below, set up by a couple of mums who've written some beautiful words around oversupplies and great techniques and what happens when you just can't breastfeed due to it. I know how difficult it can be to, to get through it and it is possible to get through and see light at the end of the tunnel and I hope this has given you some hope if you are struggling with an oversupply. Do leave comments below, I will read them all, I will reply to them all, any advice you've got for me and other mums with an oversupply please leave them below. Um, if you found this useful do give it a thumbs up and share if you know people who are struggling with breastfeeding this could be a way to help them and if you're interested in more breastfeeding videos and just general life with my little newborn you can click subscribe to just follow me. Thanks so much everybody. I hope this has been useful and have a brilliant week and good luck with your breastfeeding. <laughs>